You're listening to Too Much on Her Plate, the podcast for smart, busy women who are tired of running on the hamster wheel and are ready to create freedom from overeating and emotional eating. I'm your host, clinical psychologist, author, and a smart, busy woman too, Dr. Melissa McCreary. If the last 18 months have taught us anything, it's that stress and circumstances aren't always things we can control. And I know that is the understatement of the century. Today, I'm going to talk about stress eating. Now, this is not going to be the only episode where we talk about it because it's a big topic. But before I cover anything else about stress eating, I think it's important to start with what's key for you to make an impact. And that is to talk about how to get a sense of effectiveness or empowerment or control back. One of the things that's so heavy about stress eating is that when we're doing it, and I think most people stress eat sometimes, when you're stress eating, you're usually on autopilot. So you're reaching for something to eat reflexively or reactively without really processing an intention to eat. Or you're reaching for something to eat because you're feeling backed into a corner. By this, I mean that in that moment of feeling the stress, it doesn't feel like you have any other options for managing your feelings other than to push them down or numb them out or to give yourself a temporary boost or a reward or something else by eating. Some of the worst non-advice out there, and it is all too prevalent, probably because it's so easy to spout when you don't really have an answer, is that if you're overeating, you should become aware of the times when you're stress eating and quote, not give in to it, end quote. Let's take a little step back here to talk about how empty that advice really is. Because I know you know it, but I also bet that if you're a stress eater, there's a part of your mind that's sitting back with her arms crossed, lecturing you in that same way. Just don't do it. Lecturing you for not being strong enough to just not stress eat. You're a smart human being who has lived on this planet long enough to do some really tough things. I bet you've solved a tough problem or two in your life, and you've probably worked through some really difficult situations. I'm willing to bet that if stress eating is a problem for you, or if it ever has been, and you have a way to just not do it, you would have acted on that by now. You know from episode one of this podcast that there's always a reason you overeat. And that reason might not thrill you but it deserves our respect. Stress eating can leave you feeling like you're between a rock and a hard place, where on the one hand, the circumstances are beyond your control and you don't know what to do about them. And on the other hand, you don't want to reach for something to eat. So let's start there and let's take a deep breath and have a moment of compassion for how that feels. How it feels to really, truly feel stuck. To feel like you don't know any other options other than to reach for something to eat, to be doing something you're frustrated with yourself for doing, but to feel compelled to do it anyway, or to be doing it on autopilot. It takes a toll on you. And then when you layer on that cultural advice and that voice that might be in your head that's blaming you for giving in, well, that right there can be a recipe for even more stress eating. So if I'm describing a situation that you know, take a moment to breathe. And even put a hand on your heart and connect with the humanness of who you are. And take a moment to feel some compassion for how hard it feels to be stuck in this place with stress eating. The compassion is important. Very. And now, let's talk about smart, simple things that you can probably do to deflate and to disrupt stress eating patterns in your life, even when you can't stop the stress. And these tips I'm going to cover today, they may seem a little bit strange to you at first because you're going to notice that they have nothing to do with what kind of food to choose or when to eat or how to eat. They have to do with the reasons the stress eating is happening in your life. That may seem very basic. It may seem slightly off topic, but it is exactly perfectly on target if what you want to make are lasting changes. So let's start by giving your brain a break. You have enough to think about and to execute on and to remember. So if you haven't already started doing this, one way that you can absolutely start to take some of the stress and the pressure off is to get your thoughts out of your head and put them on paper. 
Get something to write with and just do a brain dump. List your worries, put down your to-do list, anything that is up there swirling around there in your brain. Take the pressure off of having to remember it or having to find it in there and put it on paper. When you do this, you keep those things from taking up the space inside your head. You keep those things from short-circuiting your focus and from constantly swirling. You reduce your stress. And it also gives you a chance to get some perspective, to get some distance between you and your thoughts, which takes you out of a little bit out of reaction mode and helps you to be more in charge. Here's another thing you can do. If you can do something physical, research shows us that it's very powerful and it's also really important to work stress out of your body. Physical activity, moving your body is a key ingredient in completing the cycle with stress. It's so important to move the stress that you've taken into your body to move it out of your body. There's actually a fantastic book. It's called Burnout. Um, Burnout, I think it's the secret to unlocking the stress cycle. And it's by two sisters, Emily and Amelia Nagowski. I highly recommend that book. And I will put the link in the show notes so that you can check that out if this is something that interests you. But just know that it's really important to move your body. So do something intense. Do a workout, not to burn calories, but so that you can discharge the stress. Go for a walk. Dance to loud music. Do something. Move it inside your body because moving your body and getting physical brings you back into your body. Here's another thing. If your stress is work-related or based on a lot of thoughts and thinking that you do or you know mental challenges, then you can easily get to feel pretty disconnected from the rest of your body. Doing something physical, moving your body is going to help you get more grounded. And it's at the same time, you get more grounded in your body and you get more perspective and disconnection from the stuff that's going on in your brain and in your mind, (laughs) in your head, um, which can be the place where your anxiety is living. When you're breaking free of stress eating habits, it is particularly important to pay attention to those transitions. If you haven't listened to episodes six and seven of the podcast, I go into what transitions are, why they're important, how to start paying more attention to those. So check those out and pay attention to the transitions in your day. Start pausing. Just take a few moments to ask yourself how you feel or what you need during those transition times. Remember that overeating and binging and mindless eating often happen when you're tired, when you're not paying attention and operating on autopilot. So paying attention, checking in during those transitions can start to make a huge difference with stress eating and the choices that you're making. While we're talking about autopilot and stress eating on autopilot or mindlessly, One thing that can be really effective is to use pausing as a way to interrupt that. And I'm talking about a teeny tiny pause. So one thing you can do is try taking a teeny tiny 30 second timeout before you do the snacking at your desk or before you do the eating in front of the TV. Use that teeny tiny pause to ask yourself what's going on. Ask yourself whether you're really hungry. Are you really craving food or is it something else? Use your pause to check in and be curious. I've put together a cheat sheet of all of these tips and I'm going to put the link to it in the show notes so that you can download it and access it easily if you want to review these things. Okay, so if you have nighttime stress eating especially, then it very well may be something else that you want to be paying attention to. And that something else is probably sleep. If you have a pattern of stress eating, then you want to do everything you can to sleep a minimum of seven to seven and a half hours every single night. It's really important. I mean, lack of sleep causes weight gain. It causes increased appetite. It causes cravings. It makes you less focused and less resilient to the stress that you have. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're going to be more irritable and you're going to be dealing with a host of other things that you just don't need. So if you are not sleeping seven to seven and a half hours, put this at the top of the list. This is the change that you need to target first. And as you are paying attention to your sleep, make sure you're giving yourself a transition there because too much of the time, stress eating becomes the wind down ritual. 
Stress eating becomes the thing that you do to reward yourself before bed. Instead, practice developing a ritual for unwinding and relaxing and preparing yourself for sleep so that not only are you not stress eating before bed, but also so that stress and worries and that late night eating aren't things that are interfering with the quality of sleep you get once you do go to bed. While we're talking about planning, remember that even even simple planning is empowering. Making a plan gives us a sense of power and control, and it can help you take the reins back from stress eating. So what you want to think about is getting out from behind your life, getting out from those patterns of reacting to things and, and trying to keep up with them, especially in those places where stress eating tends to show up. Do what you can to identify those times and shift from being in reactive mode to being proactive and intentional. And you do that by making plans. So identify the times of day when you tend to stress eat or overeat. And then to the extent that you can, you want to prioritize your planning for those times. Make a plan, even if it's a very simple one, for how you want to handle those times before you get there. All right, so I know we're talking about stressful times that lead to stress eating and all of these these strategies and tips I'm giving you are going to be played out within the context of that. And I want to remind you that to the extent that you can, you can shift the balance of power between you and stress eating by something as simple as focusing on increasing the amount of play and fun that you have in your day. I'm not talking about numbing behavior or avoiding the difficult stuff, but focusing on things that really feel good and fun and playful, that nourish that fun-loving part of you. It's going to be easier to avoid rewarding yourself with food or feeling like you need something to eat at the end of the day because you deserve a treat or you haven't had anything good all day if you're filling your play and fun tank in other ways. This does not have to be big and overwhelming. While it might be great to take a vacation, it's important to remember that even small, simple actions and choices can make a difference. Make it a point to check in with yourself and ask what you're doing for play and fun. How are you feeding yourself in that particular area of your life? Here's the final thing that I want to suggest today to help break the stress eating patterns in your life. Like the others, this tip is not about monitoring your food or choosing what food you eat or creating a food plan. It's about taking care of yourself so that you're not feeling so tempted to use food as a substitute for the things that you really need. This is how you end stress eating cycles instead of creating a plan where you're always being forced to be in control or take control or have willpower or just not stress eat, right? I want you to think about this for a minute. Stressful times can feel like a constant stream of doing and reacting, right? Doing and reacting to the things that are coming at you and the things that you have to do and the things that you have to deal with and the things that just happened. And it can be really easy to get disconnected in those moments from what's going on with us, from what we are needing or wanting or feeling. And because of that, to end up in an autopilot cycle of using food, of stress eating, to soothe ourselves or to numb ourselves or distract ourselves from what is going on or to give ourselves a reward or a treat because it feels like we're dealing with so much and we don't know what else to do instead. Something that you can do to shift this cycle or to step outside of it for a moment is to designate unplugged times unplugged times, times when you will unplug from your phone and your computer and your other devices. It's important to take breaks every day and to have time in your schedule where you are not expected to be reacting to other things, where you can focus on what's going on inside of you. Set aside consistent time every single day that's free of emails and texts and information overload because this is going to help you relax It's going to help you get grounded. It's going to help you be present and help you connect with what you really need, which is not food in those moments. It's going to help you complete a thought inside your head without having it overlap with something else. By doing this unplugging time, you're also going to free up some time that 
is probably more about mindless activity and just kind of, you know, scrolling and numbing out more about the mindless stuff than it's actually focused productive time. And you're going to get a bonus because you can use this freed up time to do any of these other simple strategies that I just covered. You can break patterns of stress eating. If you are stressed and if you are currently stress eating, what you're doing isn't getting you where you want to go. But there are simple steps that you can take that will begin to change the pattern. And they don't start with making choices about food they start with paying attention to what you really need. Don't forget there's a link to a cheat sheet with a summary of all of these tips in the show notes so that you can download that. And I've also given you information of the, about the other resources that I mentioned in this episode. If you're finding the podcast helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would take a moment to leave a review. Be sure that you're subscribed so that you will get notification when we release upcoming episodes. And Take the time to share the podcast with others who you think would like it too. I'll talk to you soon. If you like what you've heard, subscribe to the Too Much On Her Plate podcast and take 30 seconds to leave a review. If you're ready to tackle your hidden hungers, then come on over to toomuchonherplate.com. That's two T-O-O, muchonherplate.com and take the hidden hungers quiz. It's free and not only will you be able to pinpoint your best place to start, you'll get the resources you need to take your next step step.